Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to ABC Athens Broadcasting Channel, live from the Parthenon. Tonight, we start with a story about Spartans. The Spartans took their boys out of the family at, in, at age seven and placed them into the Gobia system, or training program. During the training program, boys usually fought to the death, and once their boys reached the age of 20, they were placed into the military for the next 40 years at, as hot plight warriors. Once they reached the age of 60, they were taken out of the service. Men could marry at the age of 30, but when not at home, homosexuality was encouraged. Sparta interviewing Leonidas the Spartan. So I'm here with Leonidas the Spartan. What's it like being in war? It's good to die in the glory of battle. It brings pride to our nation of Sparta. I feel fulfilled after every battle. Well, I've heard that a baby baby got kicked off cliff. Yes, the physically unfit are thrown off of cliffs. It is for the glory of Sparta, and therefore not on my conscience. Camacus, if we could just interrupt you for one moment, we have this dramatic reenactment of the ritual Leonidas was explaining. Now, back to you, Camacus. This is blasphemy. This is madness. This is Sparta! Um, we seem to be having some technical difficulties. Let's go back to Cam. Cam, are you alright? We seem to be having some technical difficulties over there, so we're going to go to our next segment with Evan and Life in the Agora. This is Life in the Agora. Well, today, I saw a female in Fabulous dress. She was just so gorgeous and fabulous and uh, just so fabulous. I, I can't even explain it. But come winter, she's just going to be a sheep. Covered in all that wool and... Uh, just so gross. So, I think she needs to stay with that linen. It works for her. Zeus is having... A squabble with his brothers. They're not really getting along. They're fighting. Uh, if it comes down to a fight, you know, I, I think Zeus is going to win. He is the god of the gods. He's so hot. He's heavenly. I mean, he's just like, oh. All healthy. Have you ever wanted to read? Have you ever really wanted to read a very long poem? I have the book for you. Now what book could this possibly be? That book is... The... Iliad. And if you buy today, you get the second book for free! And that book is... The Odyssey! Actual products not for sale, this is a fake ad. Hello ladies. Look at Cam Sims. Look back to me. Look at Cam Sims. Look back to me. Sadly, I'm not Cam Sims. But I can't smell like Cam Sims. With the old spice, Aqua Reef. Best a man can get. I'm with an elk. Now let's go to Dave Johnson with the weather. Hi, Dave Johnson here with the ABC Weather. We seem to be experiencing some thunderstorms coming in from the north. We have unconfirmed reports that lightning has struck the Parthenon, which of course means Zeus is angry. Zeus, of course, is the god of thunder and lightning. Down south, we have some squalls affecting some triremes and some other shipping. Now, Poseidon is, of course, responsible for this, for he's the god of the water. So, we should expect a decrease in trade throughout the Mediterranean for the next week. Now, the Olympics this weekend look good. It's going to be nothing but sun. Oh, it looks good out there. It's going to be sun in the high 80s, and those Olympic, war those Olympic trainers, they're going, to be, they're going to be sweating it out, man, I'll tell you that. Um, Helios is set to depart from our skyline around 7.30 tonight. 
He is, of course, the god of the sun, who flies in the golden chariot across the sky. Of course, you all know that. And he is expected to return out of the east uh, around 6.30 tomorrow morning. You stay classy, Athens. Thanks, Dave. Let's go to Cave Johnson with the traffic report. Welcome to ABC's Live Track Report. I'm Cave Johnson. Today, we start with Athens' most common transportation route, the ship. Now, for all you Olympic fans, if you're up in this northern part of the land up here, I would suggest traveling through Ithaca by ship. But, if you're down here by Sparta, I would suggest going by the land route and maybe by river if possible. Now we're going to move into a closer picture of Athens. Now, if you're coming down from the Parthenon to the Agora, I would suggest going around, since there's heavy foot traffic due to a skin, knee, and some bruised shins. So, I would suggest just going around the long way, it would be much quicker. Now, as we know, during this time of year, during the summer, mules drink a lot of water. And since mules can carry up to 50 pounds of weight, I would suggest bringing like two or three gallons of water, and you'll be set for the ride. Now, for all you chariot racers, you're one of the fastest modes of transportation that Greece has. Now, most of you are at the Olympics right now, and for you who made it, congratulations. But for those who didn't, you can try again in four more years. Cave Johnson, uh, are we done here? All right. Next, we have a segment about the Olympics. The Olympic Games were held yesterday with a tremendous turnout. Athletes competed in events from javelin throw to discus to the 100 meter dash. For those, for those of you who don't know, the Olympic Games are every four years and on one day. Three Greek born men can compete. They are held in Olympia, Greece, and now here are some highlights. Now to Gutamius with news around the Mediterranean. Welcome to news around the Mediterranean. My name is Gutamius. We start today with the War of the Peloponnesians. Now, earlier today, the Spartan fleet had defeated the Athenian fleet at Igospotami. Now, this seems to be the decisive blow that Sparta needs to take down Athens in this long war. Now, this war has been going on for 27 years now, and it's comprised of two different sides. The Athens, the Athenians, and their allies, which is the Delian League, and the Sparta, and their allies, which is the Peloponnesian League. Now, again, this seems like the final blow which will lead Athens to lose the war and give Sparta the upper hand. In other news, Pericles had developed a new type of government called democracy, which is led by the people for the people. This is a very different type of government than me and you are used to, which are tyrannies and oligarchies, which is led by one or couple people. Now, what happens is that each male citizen who is free and owns land is given one vote and two choices. Now, whichever decision that person votes for or likes, they put a vote on that. Now, if after everyone else has finished voting, whichever decision has the most votes is brought into law or is elected. Also, in math, Euclid has developed a new type of math called Euclidean geometry, which is the study of shapes. Also, in geometry, the Pyth Pythagoras had developed the Pythagorean theorem, which is used to find the hypotenuse of a right triangle. Now, the equation used to figure this out is a squared plus b squared equals c squared, where c is the hypotenuse and a and b are the two legs. Now, Pythagoras was born on Samos, which earlier today completed a half mile long tunnel straight through a mountain to bring fresh water to one of their cities. This construction project went on for many months, and, they had, and the workers had to dig straight through the mountain through limestone using only pickaxes and shovels. Also, in Athens today, there's a new calendar being implemented, which is split into 12 individual months, which are sequences of days. The months are as follows. Hebasamibian, Methesimian, Bihosrimian, Pisopician, Mahamichlesian, Poseidon, Gamian, Ancestrian, Elephasian, Montian, Sargian, and Skilashian. Now, each of these months begin at the beginning of each new moon. Also, earlier today, five new letters have been added 
to the um, to the Phoenician alphabet to create our own Greek alphabet. These letters being Alpha, Epsilon, Iota, Omicron, and Upsilon. Our final story tonight is paying tribute to author Aesop, who was killed today in a execution. Now, Aesop was born in 620 BCE and has published many fables. For those who don't know, Aesop was born a slave and had two masters. His second master had set him free and he went and he was a administrative missionary of the monarch of Sardis, Croesus. Now, some of his most famous um, fables were the tortoise and the hare, the ant and the grasshopper, and the goose and the golden eggs. Now, Aesop was put to death today because he was charged as a criminal for going to Delphi. Now, the monarch of Santos had given him a sack of gold and said to distribute evenly throughout all the citizens of Delphi. Now, when Aesop did not do this, he was charged with crimes against the gods by the Delphians and was put to death. That has been the news about the Mediterranean. See you all later. Thank you, Guptomius. Now we head over to Camacus interviewing the philosopher Socrates. Hello. Hello, how, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm good, good. Good. Hello. Welcome. I am here with Socrates, one of the three Greek philosophers. And uh, I have something from my intern, time traveling intern. Can you come bring that contraption over here? Oh. Uh, what, 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 what is this? Uh, hmm? uh, uh, yeah. go, go. Get out of here. Go. That is a very weird man. Yes. Uh, sometimes you can be a pain. So, what about that paradox? Oh yes, well these are my Socratic paradoxes. And what these are is basically, it is one thing that does not meet common sense. Like you know what common sense is, like it's like, oh, one plus one, it's common sense, two. Well, my Socratic paradox is like, for instance, no one desires evil. But when everyone does have a little bit of evil in them. Don't we desire it? I mean, it is impossible not to desire evil, but yet no one desires it. I mean, do, do you understand what I'm saying? Uh, no. Can you tell me more? Okay. Um, for instance, I, I have a saying. Uh, I know that I know nothing. Now, the fact that I know that I know nothing interferes with the fact that I know nothing, which is common sense. So this cannot be possible, that I know nothing, but I know that I know that. And so, do you understand that? Yes. Okay, yes. Good. good. And I bet most of you are wondering how I am still alive, but yes, I survived from that pit of death that Leonidas had kicked me into, unfortunately. Uh, sometimes he just gets very angry and loses his mind, but I'm, I am all right here. I'm fine. It, it looks like you've made a full recovery, so that is good. Yes, yes. thank you. So uh, I've heard, but I've also heard that you are going to die soon. <laughs> oh yes, this is, a, this is a quite funny story. Um, Athens has put me on trial recently um, for apparently undermining Athenian democracy and the use of Athens. So <laughs> they, they put me to death. So, um, actually, they, they just they just made me drink hemlock before this interview. You know, I, I, ca I cannot feel my legs right now. It is funny. <laughs> oh, yes. that, is, that is very ironic. It is. Uh, so, uh, I know that you don't write down your philosophical, philosophical work. How come you don't do so? Well, it's my belief that when I teach my students my philosophy, um, is that they will teach their students, and then their students will teach theirs. And therefore, there won't be no need for me to write down my philosophy, because my students will bring it down through generation after generation. Yes. Yes. Okay. That is... That might be more useful. Yes. I mean, 
it, writing does have some, you know, pros, but I believe that teaching my students will be, they will remember it better than just reading it. So, what about your uh, Socratic method? Oh, my Socratic method. My Socratic method is a way of problem solving. For instance, if we have a big problem, what we will do is we will break it into smaller, easier to solve problems. So, when we solve those smaller problems, we unlock a part of the bigger problem. And then when we solve each of those smaller problems, the bigger problem will already be solved. Yes, yes. So, it is, it is a very easy way to solve big problems. That is very good. You break it down and it's much easier to understand. Uh, yeah, so thank you for your time here and I hope to see you next time. Wait, wait, what? <coughs> what? Enter, get her! Come over here, get this, get this! Oh my god, are you okay? Thank you for tuning in, everybody. We'll see you next time here on ABC. I'm a sailor on this ship.